Hello, this is Angela with Progress Permaculture. I'm not in my garden in Portland, Oregon today. I am actually in Astoria on the Oregon coast. I'm here having a really lovely quiet weekend, staying in the home of a friend, beautiful old home. I actually just finished filming a video from a different angle. But I've, I've moved around a little bit. Filming in an old house with giant windows and tons of natural light is really a challenge when you wear glasses and there's a glare no matter where you sit. So I finally found like a little bit of an angle where Sorry about the last video. There's a lot more glare than there will be in this video. I'm knitting and I thought I'd take a few minutes and talk about some footage that I filmed a few days ago. I see in gardening groups a lot where folks are asking, what can I have that's low maintenance? You know, I have like a hell strip up by the road or I have an area of my garden where I'm just really flipping tired of weeds. I don't want to deal with mulch. What can I do? And inevitably, I see folks recommending gravel. Oh, gravel is low maintenance. Gravel is easy. Don't worry about plants. Just put some gravel down. And I thought, let's, let's talk about this for a minute because I feel like when people put an area of gravel in their garden, they are inviting all kinds of issues that maybe they weren't aware of initially. I just filmed a video where I talked about understanding the aspects of of plants that we bring into our garden and really knowing what it is that we're bringing into our garden and all of the potential consequences. And I thought, well, this is a good part too, because when you put gravel in your garden, it seems like it's gonna be really easy, right? No plants, gravel doesn't need to be pruned, it doesn't need to be mowed or watered or fertilized, easy peasy, right? And you can put a weed barrier down underneath and therefore you're not getting plants germinating up through your gravel. I could go on a whole giant rant about plastic weed barrier, AKA landscape fabric, and how terrible it is for your garden and for the environment and for future homeowners because it deteriorates into microplastic. That is a nightmare to get out of your garden. Um, but let's say you do use a weed barrier of some kind. It could be a natural weed barrier. It could be like really thick cardboard and then you put your gravel down. And that's your weed suppression. So you're not getting weeds coming up through doesn't mean that you're going to be weed free in a gravel area of your garden. And in fact, gravel can be notorious for having to weed. The first thing I want to say about gravel that I think folks don't think about or, or stones in your garden, they heat up your garden. Rocks provide thermal mass. They absorb heat during the day and radiate it back out at night. There've been some good studies and I will see if I can find them and link to them down below. Not making any promises because I'm on vacation this weekend, but I'll see if I can find them quickly and put them down below. About communities, particularly desert communities with high amounts of sun, where when you landscape with gravel, you end up heating up the temperature in your yard and surrounding your home by multiple degrees. It makes your yard hotter. And as we're facing hotter summers and the consequences of that all, all over the place, uh, adding a heat sink to your garden is probably not a super stellar idea. So realizing that when you add gravel to an area of your garden, you are increasing the heat there. Now I have gravel in my rain garden. That is an area that is shaded by plants in the heat of the summer. All of my plants overhang my uh, gravel in my rain garden and it doesn't really add a, a significant amount of extra heat but bare open gravel as a way to have a low maintenance part of your yard it's going to get hot obviously gravel is just like a, a desert right there's no habitat for for wildlife um there's no source of food or shelter for wildlife but more than that i think when we are bringing in gravel as a design element in our garden, you are not going to end up with fewer weeds in your garden as a result. I just made a video about motherwort in the garden, a self-sowing annual. Think about how plants reproduce and the mechanisms of their reproduction. Yes, there's vegetative reproduction. So when you have areas of gravel, you can get plants that throw out runners or rhizomes that can come up through weed barriers or go over weed barriers and establish themselves in the gravel part of your garden. So areas that border your gravel area, you can look at encroaching vegetation um, through that mechanism. You can also have seed dispersal that becomes a real problem. 
and I want to use this spot in my parents' yard of gravel as an illustration. There's this strip on the side of their house where the previous owner had basically, I think, taken out a garden area, a, a border, and put in gravel. So my parents didn't do this. It was already there. And the previous owner had had tenants in the mother-in-law suite above the garage. And that gravel area was the parking for the tenants' cars. And so my parents bought a house with this already in place. And they said, well, let's not rip out all the gravel. We'll just keep it as is. Myself and my two boys used to be in charge of weeding this part of the garden for my parents. And boy, oh boy, was it work. When you have weeds come up in your garden, if you get them when they're small, after a rain, they're easy to remove from soil. Weeds are always more of a pain in the behind to remove from gravel. I find it's much harder on my hands. I end up breaking my fingernails, getting in the gravel and removing weeds. But um, that's what the boys and I did to help my parents out. So we try and get on top of the weeds when they were small. Weeds can be blown in if they have, you know, wind dispersal of the seeds. Birds can come and drop seeds. And so what you get is even if you have a weed barrier and you don't have plants coming up through and germinating through the gravel, you have them coming on top of the gravel and germinating. And the kinds of plants you get that can handle the hotter, completely lacking in organic matter environment of a gravel patch or you get pioneer species that often tend to be invasive and you really don't want them. Mother nature abhors a vacuum and gravel beds are an excellent spot for those pioneer species to come in. This is prostrate spurge. Be careful the sap can give you a rash when you pull it. Volunteer succulents from potted plants across the garden, oxalis, all kinds of other pioneers that do really well where other plants struggle. And a gravel bed is an area where most plants struggle. It's hot, it's well draining, and it is devoid of organic matter. You can see the motherwort seedlings and the full-size motherwort as well. Loads and loads of weeds have blown in. This was a weekly chore for us. And this is what happens when you have one summer of getting away from the weeding. All of those pioneers get blown in or brought in through animal droppings. Don't be fooled, putting in a gravel bed does not mean creating a low maintenance situation. It means you are creating an endless cycle of weeding and maintenance in order to keep the area looking neat and tidy. Here we can see pokeweed. This is a native in most of North America, um, an invasive in some places, and it is a plant that most folks do not relish having because it is very difficult to remove. It is a good dye plant. Again, just an endless stream of fascinating pioneer species, but not something you want in an area where you were hoping to have no plants whatsoever. And also the invasive Himalayan blackberry you can see coming in. Classic example of something planted by birds that will absolutely take over a gravel bed. So you have the extra work of weeding this area where it's hotter, you have to stand in a hotter area, weed where it's harder on your hands to weed and gravel, in my personal experience. And then you get all kinds of pioneer species that you probably don't want. Uh, spurge is a big one that my parents get, um, oxalis that's invasive, pokeweed. And one thing that came up this year uh, that I was really surprised because there's none anywhere in the neighborhood is Paulonia tomentosa, which is the empress tree there is a huge one that has volunteered in my parents' garden. I don't know who in my neighborhood even has one. There's somebody, my parents' house is like on a, intersecting street is like 106, way down on a hundred and like 17th, 16th, 17th, someone has a, has a Paulonia. It's the only one I know of in the neighborhood. So how the heck did that get dispersed that far? That's why it's really invasive because it can thrive in those really marginal areas like a gravel patch. And I guess it germinates really readily and is dispersed over large distances. So that a whole area is gonna to have to be cleaned up and it will be a site of constant maintenance for future owners of that home. For me, when I see somebody saying in a garden group, I'm frustrated with this area, it's a mud patch or it's full of weeds, I need something really low maintenance and someone says gravel, gravel, gravel. I hope that you understand if you are putting in an area of gravel, you are signing up for constant maintenance of that area. If you want it to look clean and pristine and free of weeds, you are signing up for constant maintenance or you're signing up for the application of herbicides repeatedly. 
we can't ignore and circumvent the way that mother nature works in the garden. Even if we want a hyper sense of control and order, you know, I think about visiting the Japanese garden, which is incredibly ordered. There is a fleet of gardeners who work on constantly maintaining that to look very ordered, very disciplined. A clean area of gravel takes a tremendous amount of maintenance and discipline to keep it looking nice. And again, you're looking at an area that does not provide habitat for wildlife and it gets hotter than vegetation. Vegetation cools your garden, gravel, stones, rocks, concrete, bricks, all of those are thermal mass that absorbs heat during the day, radiates it out at night so that your garden is hotter during the day and hotter overnight and cools off less well overnight. So if you're thinking about putting gravel in your garden, I hope this video was helpful for you. I hope it helps you think about all of the ways that you could bring uninvited consequences into your garden if you choose to take out an area of plants and put in an area of just gravel. You may still decide that that's the right thing for your garden. That's the beauty of permaculture. It's site-specific design that is appropriate for you and is appropriate for your plot of land. Thanks for watching today. If you have any thoughts on gardening with or without gravel in your yard, love to hear about them down below. Please don't forget to click like and subscribe and I'll be back real soon. Bye-bye.